Yesterday, Wednesday, July 30th, I, Emile Bernard, arrived in Auvergne around 10 a.m. Theodore van Gogh, Vincent's brother, was there with Dr. Gachet. Already the beer was closed. I arrived too late to see him, who had left me four years ago, so full of hopes of all kinds. On the walls of the room where the body was exposed, all his last paintings were nailed, making him like a hello. On the beer, a simple white sheet, and then flowers in quantity. Sons he loved so much, yellow dahlias, yellow flowers everywhere. It was his favorite color, if he remembers it, symbol of the light he dreamed in hearts as in works. Here we are, gathered around this beer that hides a friend in the greatest silence. We're here at Auver, Vincent's final stop, and we've just witnessed part of his funeral through the eyes of the young painter Emile Bernard. Auvergne was chosen very carefully by his brother Theo as location for Vincent to stay, on advice of the known painter Camille Pizarro. It is away from Paris, the busy and dirty city, and also the place where Theo lived with his family, but still accessible by train. Here, under the medical supervision of Dr. Gachet, and in beautiful surroundings, Vincent would make himself at home a location chosen by artists more often. Colleagues as Daubigny, Cézanne, Pizarro and the amateur painter Dr. Gachet himself. The landscape here is of great splendor. It is hilly, near a river and has a nice old church dominating the city center. Vincent van Gogh lived here after being dismissed from the mental hospital Saint Paul de Mosul in saint rémy de provence the year 1890 already started turbulently for Vincent as his nephew and namesake was born in Paris on the 31st of January 1890. Vincent was very happy, like everyone else, that the name Van Gogh now could be passed on. But at the same time, the arrival of Vincent Willem gave room for sorrow and despair. Wouldn't life become too expensive for his brother Theo and wouldn't he have his focus elsewhere. At the same time, Vincent found a decent place to stay at Auberge Gravoux and got to know a great many people over a short period of time, like Dr. Gachet and his family. Close to Vincent were the people who surrounded him, the Gravoux family. He passed on after being bedridden for two days at the Auberge. Vincent had come home from the fields where he had put up an easel and wanted to work on one of his paintings. With him, he also carried a gun and rather clumsily, he shot himself twice in an attempt to kill himself, possibly. But he could make it back to his room. Later accompanied by his brother and soulmate, he would die. Expressing in his own words, he wanted it to end like this. And so, life was for a few moments and so, it was over. From his entire oeuvre, up to 80 paintings originate from here. The loss of a friend, a fellow artist, is still not the same as losing a son or a brother, as appears from a letter dated Paris 1st of August 1890, the day after Vincent's funeral. One cannot write how sad one is, nor finding solace in pouring out one's heart on paper. May I come to you soon, mother? And other artists and friends shared in the grief over Vincent's loss with his family and especially with Theo, who they knew as a successful Parisian art dealer, but even more as Vincent's caring brother. Important artists of the time, like Pizarro, Gustave Albert Aurier and Monet, expressed their condolences in letters and postcards. Among them, a friend with whom Vincent had worked and lived in the Yellow House in Arles, Paul Gauguin. His letter reads as follows. My dear Van Gogh, we have just received your sad news 
which greatly distresses us. In these circumstances, I don't want to write you the usual phrases of condolence. You know that for me he was a sincere friend and that he was an artist, a rare thing in our epoch. You will continue to see him in his works. As Vincent used often to say, stone will perish, the word will remain. As for me, I shall see him with my eyes and with my heart in his works. Cordially, ever yours, Paul Gauguin. Vincent's living presence ended here in Auvergne. But as Theo notices already in the same letter to their mother, dating from the 1st of August from Paris, if he, Vincent, would have seen how people behaved to me when he had left us and could have seen the kindness which so many showed for him, he would, for the moment, not have decided that he wanted to die. Once in July 1888, Vincent expressed rather precisely his expectations on the afterlife in a letter from Arles dating 9 or 10 July 1888. Why, I say to myself, should the spots of the light in the firmament be less to us than the black spots on the map of France. Just as we take a train to Tacasson or Rouen, we take death to go to a star. For Vincent van Gogh, his train to the stars parted from Auvers-sur-Oise on the 29th of July, 1890.